Now, fuel prices have inched up this morning, roughly 24 hours after an increment on Wednesday, sparking concerns. Fuel prices may be breaking chains and spiral out of control. The state oil company is today selling a liter of diesel at 14 Ghana City, 74 Pes West, while super or petrol is going for 14 cities, 15 Pes West. This morning's increment is in direct response to the MPS U10 on the removal of the price stabilization and recovery levy on the price buildup of petroleum products. Here's what we know so far. So the MPA will set and communicate price flaws for the deregulated products for each pricing window and from the 1st to the 15th of each month and then the 16th to the 30th of each month as well. And of course, petroleum service providers, the PSPS, shall no longer, under the new rules put forward by the MPA, submit indicative S refinery and S pump prices to the National Petroleum Authority. And of course, ex refinery price, that's the FOB price. Uh, we have the, those who supply their premium. They also have ex pump price, ex refinery price, taxes, levies. There's also a margin that comes with it as well. And so for the PSPS, shall also determine prices of gasoline, petrol, gas oil, liquefied petroleum uh, gas, that's LPG, gas oil, low carb, kerosene, marine, independently using the prescribed petroleum pricing formula. So oil marketing companies could be fined from between 5,000 to 20,000 Ghana cities if they do not comply with the MPS directive. And so effective April 4th, that's uh, today, uh, 16 petrol, diesel 14, LPG uh, 14 as well. Those are the upward price adjustments that we have witnessed today. So this singular decision is imparting prices heavily, prompting consumers to question government objective for the U10 on the suspension of that tax. And this afternoon, we have some response for you. Uh, I also be, we have, an, uh, uh, and the MPA is in the studio to tell us more about this. But let me first bring in Mr. Nankanamwa. Uh, he is a watcher of this industry. So, Mr. Nankanamwa, two issues. I mean, yesterday, <laughs> I, I closed from work. I was, I was on my way home. I decided to buy fuel. When I checked from the, from, from the pump I was buying, uh, petrol was selling at, 13 Ghana cities, 99 pesos. West. Now, this morning on my way back, I realized that there's been uh, an upward increment. Now it's gone to 14 point something. What really is happening from where you sit as an executive director for the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers? Thank you very much. Good afternoon to your viewers. Mm. Uh, you are fortunate you got yesterday. I had to buy just this morning. Uh, sadly, I had to pay the 14.16 uh, for petrol, while diesel has crossed uh, 15 or almost 15 for some oil marketing companies. Uh, like you rightly indicated, this is uh, a follow-up from MPA's directive yesterday that the price stabilization and recovery levy, which they had uh, gone down on earlier in the, in the beginning of the, the window, mm. uh, should be restored. It leaves you wondering what kind of consultation really had gone on, mm. uh, what kind of uh, numbers cranking had gone on for the MPA to arrive at uh, that earlier communicate that the stabilization levy uh, should be zeroed. But we are also quite mindful of the fact that uh, the global, I mean, developments are looking quite, you know, uh, dire. Right. Uh, we are aware the NPA is aware of this. Uh, the city has equally been, I mean, quite poor relative to the dollar over the past uh, four pricing windows, uh, more than two months uh, in a row. And so any industry person, any person in, interested in uh, how consumers would fare uh, would begin to want to implement measures uh, to, as it were, reduce the hardships uh, on people buying from the pump. So I am quite thinking that the NPA, being aware of these numbers, mm. 
uh, trying to also help uh, the consuming public would have made policy suggestions to uh, the finance ministry and for that matter, any other person that needed to be consulted to go down on one of the taxes, which is the stabilization levy. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, that levy is being the main source of funding for, uh, as it were, the premix that fishermen are currently using. So mm. it looks as though the fund has run out. Right. It looks as though they would need more money to pay for premix, for which reason uh, they would now come back to say that what we reversed on the 1st of April, on the 4th of April, uh, please restore and start charging in it. Uh, it's inconvenient for consumers, it's inconvenient. I mean, doesn't it public. make it so, so confusing that you, you take a decision today and after four days the decision is reversed? I mean, what happened to planning and being forthright with like people? Like how I said? Like I was suggesting, our little engagements with the NPA, uh, you have people in there who would clearly want the public to get some good. Uh, I am certain in my mind, I haven't spoken with them yet, mm. uh, that they probably uh, being aware of you know price movements globally, again, how bad the city is faring, they would have made policy suggestions to government uh, to look at, I mean, going down on some of the taxes for which right. I am certain would have culminated in the earlier announcement for them to go down on the stabilization levy to zero. Uh, but I'm sure that government is also hard pressed for, for money. So government would return and say, look, if you don't charge that one, we won't find money for premix. So go back and collect it. The confusion uh, could have been averted, but I am quite certain if you read uh, what is happening today, uh, the, the Ukrainian drones are actually bombing Russian refineries. So they are knocking off a lot of the outputs, uh, the refined product output. What that will mean is that uh, this window, the next window, there will be a squeeze. People will have to pay more. Yes. The city is not even stable for you to say that uh, the city could help, I mean, ease up the pressure. So if the two continue to push, uh, I'm, I'm afraid poor prices will simply uh, go past the 15, 16 mark in no time. Because from, from, from what I'm reading, the instability in the Middle East and the, the issues that are happening between Israel and Iran now may push prices even further. I agree with you. And I'm sure the bits of information available to all of us, NPA would have had that information. NPA would have made policy suggestions or propositions to the government to say, look, the myriad of taxes on the petroleum price bill that the PBU, if you could go down on some of them, we can contain uh, these increments uh, looming or that are imminent. And I, suspect, and I suspect that that was the reason why the suspension came into effect on... Uh, Exa four, four, four exactly my thinking. Mm -hmm. Exactly my thinking. So when you wake up three, four days later, and then there's a, an overturn, it simply tells you that maybe government is, I mean, opposed to it completely and is insisting they should go back and collect the money. Otherwise, I do not see how MPA will shoot itself in the foot uh, the way this has, I mean, played out. But clearly, it could be coming out of, you know, some useful thinking, uh, some policy idea or suggestion uh, to authorities to consider so as to not overburden the consuming public because you have also retreated. Once these things are happening, I've had conversations with the driver uh, bodies from GPR to you to consent, to committed to all of them. Mm. They are asking, is this going to be sustained? Should they increase transport fares? Right. So it has a certain cascading effect. I am sure these are the sort of things NPA would have tried to avert. But clearly, if the government doesn't have money, the government doesn't have money. They will have to come back and collect it, my, my, sadly. My, my final question will be, in, in an environment where your city is not doing so well, where global politics is you know pushing prices up there appears to be no end in sight if you are to advise government on the way forward to cushion the consuming public what would that be when levy that was supposed to bring some relief has now been reimposed on the consumer you see we have suggested this time with our number that you need a dual dual pricing formula uh, should be considered. Mm. Now, considering dual pricing formula is to say that, look, in times when prices are favorable, 
we could have the full stream of taxes, right? Mm. But in times when prices are so bad that if we allow the pumps to just adjust, uh, everybody will have to pay so much. Cost of living baselines will go up. Inflation, and I have repeated this time without number that government is the single largest consumer in the, in the, in the economy. So once fuel goes up, everybody that depends on government for fuel to be able to go about their, their normal day-to-day -day work would simply have to pay more, and that will hit government's expenditure uh, bottom. Mm. And so these increases, it would inconvenience the, the private person, uh, but, I mean, albeit for a short period. The government will have to find money to pay German, uh, across board. Once that happens, government expenditure will simply be thrown overboard. Mm. And so we are thinking that the earlier they consider a dual pricing formula, where when international market prices are so fatal or so bullish, we ease down the taxes a bit. When we can accommodate the taxes, then you can introduce and even add on so that prices are a bit balanced or stable. But as it stands, we are not looking at that. Centro came on stream not long ago, and already Dumso has also knocked out Centro. So you yes. may have to go back to importing 100% yes. everything. There's, there's quite a bit of a challenge that we need to uh, find tentative solutions. But as to whether that is where we are or what we are doing, uh, your guess will be as good as mine. We are not looking for solutions. Quick fixes. That's all we're doing. Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Duncan. I'm one the is uh, with the uh, petroleum uh, consumers and those are his comments on this particular matter but how is this impacting on your pockets we spoke to some people in the streets of accra uh, this one is very difficult because anytime there's an increment in fuel prices we have to wait for our authorities to give us an, an order but as at now there has been no order so we have nothing to say about it until the authorities give us order that maybe you should increase the fare or not. Other than that, there's no way we can increase it. That's what is going on. In fact, it is very bad. It is very bad. As I, as I now that I'm talking to you, drivers are suffering. There has been increased, they've increased everything in Ghana, but transport fares alone has gone down. We cannot afford it. We cannot afford the fuel prices. It is very difficult for us. So if the government would take a good look at what is going on, it would be far better for us because we can come to work, go home with an empty hand. We have families. We have, fam we have wives and children. A lot of drivers are crying, but it is very bad for us. That's what, what is going on. Um, I understand that we have global crisis economically. So we have to be careful the way we argue about issues of fuel increment and other commodities. Um, I don't want to sound political, but the issue is that there is untold hardship now. For people to even afford one meal a day is a challenge. I think we can all appreciate that. Uh, that notwithstanding, if you ask me, people in government need to actually be selective when it comes to increasing certain uh, the price of certain commodities, especially fuel, which is very sensitive. You know, fuel is a determinant of the pricing in the country. And any attempt to actually hike it will holistically affect everything. You know, cars go to bring goods from um, the villages. And if fuel prices have been increased, definitely the cost will be transferred to the consumer. So much as we appreciate that there is a problem, like I stated earlier, uh, we should try as much as possible to also try to bring some subsidy. The fuel price they bring it, this is enough. We can't buy the fuel. Last time they said they bring the fair for us, but the fair didn't come out. You know, we can't buy the spare parts. We stop the cars for you. We can't, we can't buy anything. The spare parts is more than everything. So, not the fuel, only the fuel we buy it. Spare parts. Now, we can fair from 2016, we buy it 4 million. Now, we 7 million to 8 million. We can't buy it. 
now they are, you are requesting the food. We are suffering. So they, they should do something for us. Okay. You see, one liter is now be uh, seven, uh, 70 cities for one liter. So you buy almost two million, you get two liters and small. I hope say many grandma kwana is here maybe a um I best rabbi no say and yeah ma my dinga cra but a bay on shifu and I say m said a bay um gana for some behind cacra. Um uh it is a bounce out so I did the name yeah maton I hope say bibiano a baba from a my gana for um behind cacra and yes I'm say gana from behind. So again, the bigger issue is about the increments and the effect it will have on transportation especially. And Abbas Imo is the Industrial Relations Officer with the Ghana Private Road Transport Union. And he joins me here in the studio. Mr. Inuza, you're welcome. Thank you, sir. I hope the Ramadan is, is treating you well. We are managing. <laughs> A few it's, days ago. It's a must. So yes, a few days ago. And I'm sure we'll come with a lot of blessings. We are finishing hard. Yes. We are finishing hard. So is it welcome news or news that you, you, you dread? This can never be a welcome news. Because already we are restrained with the current fuel prices. Mm -hmm. We even came up and we draw an increment, like one of my colleagues said. Yes. We, we are seriously, seriously being very careful. Mm. We don't come up with an increment just to visit an increase in fuel the next day as we have just now. experienced. Mm. Because it takes time before we come up with an upward adjustment mm. in glory phase. We are aware the whole nation is up to us looking at what exactly we are going to come mm. up with. We most of the time also think about our clients who are our passengers. You know, it is our children, our relatives who join the vehicles. Mm. So most oftenly, we are being very careful before coming up with any upward adjustment. That is our business. Our business is currently declining. So we are working seriously to see what best we could come up with. And the recent issue has even justified whatever we will come up with. But because I know that in times past, we wanted to increase first. Yes. And then meetings upon meetings. Through that. Yes. And now these latest increments clearly put you in a position where you will say that, no, we cannot continue to charge the existing fee and that there's a need for us to adjust our fares. Is that, have you started discussing that? Yes. Uh, today, uh, our leadership has arranged for a meeting next week. Mm. So God willing, God willing, next week, we'll definitely come up with something. Mm. We initially came up with something. Transport Ministry throwing the towel that would, we know they also defend our clients and, and they are pleading, we can't go solo, mm. going on our own. And we agreed to that. We gave them that respect. We sat, I think, twice then. There was a hold up of which our leadership has signaled all of us today that God willing, next week, Wednesday, we'll be having a meeting on this current issue. So, so, so this meeting that is coming up on Wednesday is to decide whether to increase price, increase first, and by how much? It's, it's to see to ourselves how to, if there is a need of readjusting what we already have in the bucket mm. or adding something to it or otherwise before finally uh, sitting with the uh, transport ministry and we blow up whatever we have in the bucket. Meaning wh wh whatever decision you will come to, you, you it will have to be such that you agree with the transport ministry or the coordinating uh, council? Normally, no, no, we are not under the coordinating council. They, they, they've always been part of, they, they, of this they, process. They sing their song, and if you listen to the song, there's no trouble in it. Mm. And even the bass is distorted. <laughs> we, are no, we are autonomous. Uh -huh. 
undisputedly, everybody, they themselves know no. that the leading private transport operators in the country. We operate everywhere, mm. even places without names. We even give places names. Mm. We know it. And what we are saying is, whatever decision we arrive at, and the transport ministry are also there to defend the... Uh, the government the and the public. The yes. The public, yeah. Mm. So we most often sit with them, argue on whatever decision we have taken. Yes, insurance premium was here. It has gone up by this margin. You know, we don't run transport with only fuel. Mm. But fuel plays most important. The claim is that it, yes. it plays about 30% of yes. the operational cost. I will even give it 40%. 40%. And give the rest, the other. We have documentation of insurance premium. Spare pass. This uh, permits, etc., etc. We have lubricant spare pass also mm. playing its role. So we have to visit all these issues and put it in one basket. This is what we've been doing. But, so, mm -hmm. when we are up with things that we, we can defend anywhere, like we are here, mm. yes, if we have come up with a percentage of upward adjustment, I should be in a very good position to defend whatever decisions you ask me. You mm. Tell your people my advice is double B. <laughs> one. We'll do that. One is. We'll do that. Okay. Mm. So, this is what we do. So, when is the God willing, our leadership has some of us for a meeting, of which, of course, we are going to, like you build a house, the final touches, then we will revisit the transport ministry. But are your members complaining? Is, they, it, is it impacting on your they, operations? They are complaining. The fact that they are working means they are also make, they are making they sales. Are we, they are making uh, sales. They, they are still making if sales. If I say they, we are complaining. Mm -hmm. We are all complaining all the time. But you see, we have a laid down regulation of which we want to abide by mm. that indicating we are always law abiding citizens. Mm. We don't do right. things apparently. All right. So that is the Alaji, I'll come back to you to wrap up on this matter. But let me just uh, quickly bring in uh, Professor uh, Godfrey Bobkin with the University of Ghana Business School. Prof, it's a pleasure to have you here on the pause. Now, I mean, Yesterday was another matter. Today is another matter. There appears to be no end in sight in, in terms of the way the economy is, is hitting us. Fuel clearly drives everything, drives the economy. I mean, can the government do something about this? Long ago. Um, there are so many things not going in our favor. Um, Government made some attempts a couple of weeks ago, also including the removal of the stabilization service. Mm. But the government changed its mind. I think that two and a half years ago, it was very clear to us that the government needed to take certain drastic measures, especially on wasteful expenditure cuts. Failure to do so, it was going to be difficult to have the fiscal space to grant some relief to Ghanaians without compromising the macro uh, uh, gains that you have made. That is, these are the difficult choices the government is confronted with. So it, it, it is not coming to me as a surprise that the government is, is reversing some of those decisions. And, and we should also just bear in mind that um, the honeymoon of the IMF program is over. And therefore, the reality is coming to, 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 to bear. And, 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 and if, you, if you look at the data from Bank of Ghana, even from the composite index of economic activity, from business confidence index, consumer confidence index, and all of that, you realize that they, we, we haven't seen any significant improvement. Mm. And then also, if you see the rate of uh, the decline in inflation, that we witness, especially in the second half of 2023, you can see that that case has slowed completely. Right. And now hovering around 23% and all of that. And then also, if you look at the latest uh, monetary policy committee press release, you will see that one of the reasons why the, the, the monetary policy committee of Bank of Ghana decided to keep the rate at 29% was to make reference to 
to the possibility of the petroleum price going up, export price going up. Mm. Okay, and because the pass through is, is is real and is contemporaneous to some extent, right? Of course, some transmission lag you can see that uh, if you do the modeling, and then also if you see the exchange rate uh, depreciation, it pass through. Of course, there's some transmission lag, but of course you can also see it effect and all of that. So. Yes, we've made some progress, but we, there's still a lot that we have to do uh, going forward. If you look at the 2023 GDP decomposition, mm. you can see that industrial activity really has slowed and all of that. So really, we are not adding value to our pr primary products in order to command margins. Okay, And even the, the sub-sectors that drove growth in 2023, they were not intensive sub-sectors of the economy to drive the necessary job creation and employment that one would have, would have wished. Right, and, and I've just been asking myself and some of my guests that came on early on about why government will, will, will institute a program to say that we are suspending the levies and then four days later, there's another communication that says that no, the levies should go back. And I look at some of the IMF timelines and it says that the expenditure savings, which are also critical to create the needed fiscal space, was stem from efficient gains and a reduction of the large subsidy bill to the energy sector. Is it the case that we forgot that we are, we are under an IMF program and then suddenly realized that I, no, I, we need to ensure that we stay within uh, their limits? Yeah, I think um, it's also an admission that the government admits the level of pressure and, and they would have wished to do something about it. That's why I say that um, the real Stuff that government needed to do, they failed to do that. If you look at the IMF supported program, expenditure rationalization of restraints is only contributing uh, uh, just about 40% to the fiscal savings under the IMF supported program, mm. whilst it is heavily based on revenue and taxes and taxes. But once you, you have that approach, you, you, it's very difficult then to have the necessary fiscal space to maneuver in, in, in difficult times. Mm. Okay, and, and that is where they find themselves. But could there be a way out? We have soaring fuel prices. On the energy sector, there's so much uncertainty. I mean, it's un mm -hmm. I mean I, I have, I'm living in, in the state where I have conditioned myself to, to the point where my light can go off and I wouldn't know when it will come back. And that creates a lot of issues in the system. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, um, you don't need to be an economist or um, uh, objective to see what is going on. This is an election year. And, and yet we have all this um, doom show and all of that going on. If there's really anything that government <laughs> would want to do, perhaps, then time is not on their side. Mm. But I think that we should just um, brace ourselves up for more challenges ahead. Um, of course, we know that the worst case scenario, we have crossed that, but we are not out of the way. There are challenges ahead. Uh, unfortunately, as, as I indicated earlier, the, the hardcore things that government needed to do to free up space in order to pass on some relief to Ghanaians, the, the, the president is not willing to do that. Government is not willing to do that. Mm. Once you're not willing to do that, it's going to be difficult. So let's, it, it looks as though let's muddle through. Remember that beyond the IMF supported program, we are not doing anything of our own to complement the gains from there. And the IMF managing director, the president himself had told us that it will, it will take something more than the IMF supported program for us to get out of this. But the question is, what is it that we are doing on our own to complement the limited gains from the IMF supported program? We need to demonstrate that. I think we need to inspire hope. And I think the president needs to come to terms with the reality that, yes, um, he has just a few months, and, 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 and things are not going well. The, the level of recovery, remember just a couple of months ago, we were singing, turning the corner, yes. and turning the corner, and turning the corner. Uh, what has happened to that song? Who took it away from our lips? We need to do a lot more to sustain that turnaround story. So the evidence on the ground right now mm. is, is contrary. So, 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 so therefore, better days are very far away from us. Well, I, I think we have said before that if we are looking at real improvement in the lives of the ordinary Ghanaian, 
we are talking about greater economic transformation and increasing productivity growth. This is we, we can't expect that within a, a three year IMF supported program. No, that's not possible. That's right. not possible. That well, would be as difficult as asking fees to climb a tree. Well, that's <laughs> A, a long time away from us. Professor Goffred Bobkin, thank you very much for your time this afternoon here on the pause. I'll you, let me wrap up with you here. So we are all looking forward to this Wednesday meeting. I asked you earlier about the frustration or the challenges your members are going to, whether they are able to keep their heads no, above no, water. Don't exclude me. We are going okay. to. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a professional driver. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yes, it's true. And we we'll just played with them. It's like seeing a driver in the vehicle. You just see the head, the hands, mm -hmm. them, but you don't know what is going on under. Yes, that is exactly when the short period that they were not hearing of us, we were accelerating the launch and as normal as a normal driver should do. Mm. So, God willing, I strongly believe we will come out with a sound percentage of which our members will embrace. The passengers should not blame anybody as such. So until the Wednesday meeting and then the, the formal communication, nobody should increase first? For now, no, not at all. We should manage and... Uh, we, now, if you increase it and you come up with about 10% and we decide to come at above, that, that uh, what are you going to do? Mm. You are going to create enmity between you and your clients. You'll be fighting yourselves. And if you decide to come up with something and... The public says, no, we are not privy to that. It's going to create another problem. So we we'll played with our membership or the entire professional driving society to exercise patients so that we look at the other side of the coin and come up with something better which will benefit all of us. And we'll move on with Thank you so much. That meeting is next week, Wednesday. Wednesday God willing. Uh, yes, yeah. that is the, the GPRT position. So even though price of petroleum products uh, they, they've gone up. It doesn't provide any justification for any increment al for on transport fares, at least for now. You have to wait till Wednesday when they will hold their meeting and then announce whether they're going to increase or they're going to keep prices the way they are. This.